Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to give you an overview of current Intel and AMD central processing units or CPUs, otherwise known as microprocessors. On the Intel side, the range starts with her latest 2021 Atom chips, followed by the more powerful Celeron and Pentium families. Next, we get to Intel's core range, which includes their Core M3, Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, Core i9, and Core X series CPUs. Lastly, we have the Xeon chips that Intel sells for servers and other mission critical computing applications. On the AMD side, the range starts with our lower end Athlon chips, after which we get to their more powerful Ryzen family with its Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 9 members. Next, and even more powerful, are the Ryzen Threadripper chips, and finally, things are topped off with the Athlon Pro, Ryzen Pro, and Epic families aimed at the workstation and server market. As you can see, the range of Intel and AMD microprocessors is pretty complicated, and each chip listed is available in lots of different models. So, let's now dive in to look at things in more depth. And to do so, we first need to consider some key aspects of a CPU's specification. Key CPU specifications include clock speed, core count, multi-threading, and cache. Clock speed is measured in gigahertz, and the higher the value, the more instructions a CPU can execute per second. Today, most CPUs have both a base clock speed, as well as a turbo or boost frequency, which they can operate at if they remain within safe temperature and power limits. Core count indicates how many individual processing units a CPU contains, and hence how many tasks or threads it can execute at the same time. So, the more cores a processor has, the higher its potential performance. Parallel processing is enhanced further if a CPU supports multi-threading, which uses virtualization to allow each single core to run more than one thread at the same time. Intel's multi-threading technology is called hyper-threading, whilst AMD's is known as simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT. Usually, multi-threading doubles the thread count so that, for example, a quad-core processor can execute eight threads simultaneously. However, processors with four-way multi-threading have been produced to allow each core to run four threads at the same time. Cache is a type of very fast RAM built into a CPU and improves its performance by reducing the requirement to transfer data into and out of standard RAM. So, the more cache a processor has, the better it will perform. CPU cache also comes in three categories, known as Level 1, Level 2 and Level 3, with Level 1 being the fastest but also the most expensive. Modern CPUs come with some Level 1 cache plus larger quantities of Level 2 and Level 3. However, many CPU listings only indicate a single cache value, and to keep things simple, I'm going to take this approach here. Cache really needs a whole explaining computer's video to itself. With some terms defined, let's now turn to Intel's CPU range. This starts with its Atom family, which consists of low-energy chips manufactured for tablets and smartphones, as well as for IoT, edge computing, and microservers. Most Atom chips are embedded on a motherboard rather than fitted in a socket, and hence are not available for individual system builders. Most Atom chips are also not that powerful. However, the Atom P5962B which is designed for use in network base stations, does have 24 cores and an impressive 27 megabytes of cache. Next, we have Intel's Celeron and Pentium processor families, which are intended for use in lower cost desktop and laptop computers. Recent Pentium models are either silver, which are optimized for cost, or gold, which are optimized for performance. Current Celeron processors have base clock speeds of up to 3.5 GHz, up to 4 cores, no hyper-threading, 
and no more than a minimal 4 megabytes of cache. Meanwhile, current Pentium processors have base clock speeds up to 4.2 GHz, up to 4 cores, hyper-threading on some models, and a cache of up to 6 MB. Moving on, we get to Intel's core range, which includes their Core M3, Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, Core i9, and Core X series. Here, the Core M3 chips are designed for mobile devices that need to be lightweight with a good battery life. Next, the Core i3, i5, i7 and i9 chips are mainstream desktop and laptop processors with increasing levels of performance. Finally, the Core X series delivers the highest performance with its extreme version i7 and i9 chips. As we can see, the maximum number of cores, base clock and cache increases across the Core family, and it should be noted that Intel's hyper-threading technology is now available in all core ranges apart from Core M3. Finally, we have Intel's Xeon CPUs, which are intended for servers and high-end workstations. These come in a number of families, including Xeon E for entry-level servers and Xeon W for workstations. There are then four different kinds of scalable Xeon CPU called Xeon Platinum, Gold, Silver and Bronze, all of which allow systems to be built with more than one processor. At the time of making this video, the most powerful Xeon chip is the Platinum 9282, which has 56 cores, a 2.6 GHz base frequency, a turbo speed of 3.8 GHz and 77 MB of cache. And remember, this scalable processor is intended for use in a multi-CPU system. In the last few years, the dominance of Intel in the microprocessor marketplace has been challenged by AMD or advanced micro devices. Today, AMD's lower-end chips are members of its Athlon family, with silver and gold models available in direct competition to Intel's silver and gold Pentium chips. Athlon base clock speeds are up to 3.5 GHz, with up to 4 cores and 6 MB of cache. In competition to Intel's core family, we next have AMD's Ryzen 3, 5, 7 and 9 microprocessors. All of these feature AMD's SMT multi-threading technology, and as we can see, have very impressive core counts and cache in the higher-end processors. If we add in AMD's Ryzen Threadripper family, the specifications get very impressive indeed, with the top of the range Threadripper 3990X having 64 cores, a base clock frequency of 2.9 GHz, and a combined 292 megabytes of cache. Next, in the AMD lineup, we find the Athlon Pro and Ryzen Pro for business workstations. These have very similar specifications to their consumer counterparts, but offer a higher production quality with longer warranties and improved security. Finally, AMD sells its epic family of server CPUs, which are scalable like Intel's competitor Xeon chips, with the top of the range Epic 7H12 boasting 64 cores, a 2.6 GHz base clock boosting to 3.3 GHz, and a combined 292 MB of cache. So far in this video, I've mainly been discussing processor families within which lie many different processor models. Each of these individual CPUs also has its own name, which looks something like this. Both Intel and AMD use pretty similar conventions, with their CPU names starting with a brand, such as Intel Core or AMD Ryzen, followed by a brand modifier such as i7. Next comes the number of the processor's generation, followed by some SKU or stock keeping unit digits. Lastly, there is a product line suffix which provides important information about a processor's capabilities. For example, a G suffix appears if a CPU has integrated graphics, or in the case of Intel processors, an F is used to indicate a chip that can only be used with a separate graphics card. As we can see in our example, an Intel G suffix may also be followed by a number in the range 1 to 7 to indicate graphics capabilities. 
Other suffix letters include K, which for an Intel CPU indicates that a processor's frequency is unlocked so it can be overclocked, T, which indicates a low power consumption chip, H, which indicates a high performance mobile chip, U, for a power efficient mobile chip, and Y, for an extremely low power mobile chip. Neither Intel or AMD use an entirely consistent name and number system across their entire range with, for example, Intel Pentium CPUs not having suffix letters. This said, for processors that do carry them, it's really important to stress that only Intel processors without an F suffix and only AMD processors with a G suffix have onboard graphics. Today, this includes most consumer Intel CPUs, but by no means all AMD chips. AMD indeed market their processors as either CPUs or APUs, with APU standing for Accelerated Processing Unit and describing a microprocessor that includes both a CPU and a GPU. I cannot stress strongly enough that most desktop Ryzen processors are CPUs and not APUs. This means that if you purchase a Ryzen chip without a G suffix and plug it into a motherboard, you will not get a video signal on its monitor connections. This is something I get an increasing number of messages about. So please be careful to choose a G suffix Ryzen processor if you're not fitting a separate graphics card in your computer. The only part of a microprocessor specification I've not mentioned so far is the price, which inevitably rises as power and performance increase. As I make this video in the spring of 2021, microprocessor prices are also rather high, and this is due to supply shortages which began in 2020 as the demand for computer hardware rose. This means that, right now, it remains difficult to buy exactly the microprocessor you want, let alone at a reasonable price, and I would imagine high microprocessor prices are going to continue for at least the rest of 2021. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.